everybody, Jim Byrne here. This is the animator inside of SOLIDWORKS. During this video, I want to walk through some of the basic features that you need to know to get yourself started with making animations. The first thing we'll do is pick on the Motion Study tab. And right away, I'm, I'm right-clicking on Orientation and Camera Views and disabling pay Playback of View Keys because we're not interested in the orientation of the model until we get our paths and for our components. Then we can begin moving these parts. And I'll start with the pull ring. Over here in the motion manager, we'll drag and drop this bar on the timeline to about two seconds and then move one of our components. And it automatically generates a path for that part as long as we have the auto key creation turned on, which is on by default. And then we can move the timeline again, drag and drop the component, and again, it makes another path for that part. And you can play this back at any point. And we can do this for other components as well. Drag and drop the timeline. Move the arrow. Now in this case, the, uh, the timing for that path starts at zero seconds. Well, I want it to start at three seconds, so I'm going to drag and drop this key over to three, or maybe even right click on that key and you can edit the exact time. Type it in. We'll zoom in, zoom in a little bit closer on this timeline. Not only can you create paths for motion, but you can change the appearance too. Right click on the arrow, hide the part, and you'll notice that I get another path for the appearance. If I expand it, you can see that you can create paths for the motion, explode steps, appearance, even change the, the mates, so uh, tell it whether those mates are on or off throughout the animation. Well, speaking of explode steps, this part up here is fully defined, so I can't just simply drag and drop it around. But if I create an exploded view, we can use that in our animation. Explode view, grab our parts, drag and drop them. Every time I drag it, it creates a, a new step. And I, I may want to look at other views so that I can tweak the, the distance on that step a little bit. It just needs to be close to make it look good. Then we can accept that, and we'll right-click on our assembly to collapse that explode. And now I want to place those steps inside of my motion manager. And we can do that using the animation wizard. It looks like a camera with a magic wand on it. And we can use this to rotate the model or explode or collapse it. We'll explode it. Here's how long the explode steps take where it begins. And when I finish, we'll see over in our motion manager the steps that it created. And you can even change the length of time for each one of those steps. Or again, right click on it to enter in the exact time. <clears throat> well, now that we have some, some paths, and appearances in here, we might be interested in changing the orientation of our model. And in order to do that, we're going to right click on our orientation camera views and turn off the disable playback of view keys and view key creation. And I'm making sure that my timeline is here at the beginning, at zero seconds. This is where I want my animation to begin, let's say right about here. And then we'll drag and drop our bar over to 10 seconds. And let's rotate over to another position. Now it's going to begin rotating at the beginning of the animation. Well, I don't really want to do that. So I'm going to move this key over to 8 seconds. Then it will begin there, begin rotating at that point. And now we can right click on orientation and camera views and turn disable view key creation back on um, since I don't want to uh, make any changes to it at this point. 
Another thing I might want to do at this position is begin changing some appearances. We did a little bit of that with the arrow. Um, I'll do it again with this body. Not only can you hide components, but you could also um, change colors. In fact, I'm going to add a, a key right here for the, the main body. Notice there's a, a button right here to add a key when you select the component. That way we don't have to drag and drop it over later. Then I'll change the color of that main body. And make sure that you're not changing the color of the part itself, that you're changing the color of that part in this assembly document. We'll make it red. And it will actually gradually turn red. You can see it starts out with that blue color and then turns to red near the end of that path. We could even add a transparency in there, drag that diamond over, and then pick on that part and make it transparent. So again, it's, it's going to turn red and then gradually turn transparent. Well, if this is all that we want to do in our animation, then we can consider saving it as an AVI. Um, pick on Save Animation. And uh, I'll walk through a couple of the features in here. The renderer, we can use the SolidWorks screen, which you can see there. Or you can also use PhotoView if you have SolidWorks Professional. And it will actually create a photorealistic rendering of every frame that's in the AVI. It takes a lot longer and it makes a bigger file, but uh, it, it looks real nice when it's done. You can also change the image size and aspect ratio, as well as the frames per second. And typically I'll go with something like 15 frames per second for an AVI that's this long. And when you save it, it'll then ask you for the video compression. You can change the compressor, depending on what you have installed. Microsoft Video will open up in almost any operating system. And um, compression quality. Uh, we can keep that at 85. You might want to bump it up. It'll, it'll improve the quality of the AVI, uh, but it also increases the file size. Uh, if you want to decrease the file size, then drag and drop it down, but not too far because then the uh, quality of the AVI will go down um, quite a bit. Another thing that I might mention is if you like your uh, motion manager at this point and it's working fine, I would suggest backing it up and one way to do that is right click on the motion study tab and duplicate it. So this way you know that you have one motion study that works and then uh, when you start making changes to motion study 2, uh, if there's any issues that, uh, that occur, you can always go back to the one that was working fine. That's it. Thanks for uh, joining me for animations inside of SolidWorks. Have a good day.